Commuters are expected to be hit with train chaos again today after the union rejected the New South Wales government's $264 million deal so far. The updated offer is said to slash a previous $3,000 bonus offer that is there for rail workers. Let's get a little more on this now. Joining us is the head of the Rail, Tram and Bus Union, Alex Classens. Alex, uh, good morning. Thank you for your time this morning. So the Transport Minister told me here yesterday that it did bow to your demands. A deed was sent to you on Wednesday night. So why are you still striking? No, well, we didn't get a deed on Wednesday night. Uh, we got an offer on Wednesday night um, after half past ten at night. They sent through a range of documentation uh, which was uh, in draft. It, was, it wasn't a deed, uh, but it was an offer from Sydney Trains and New South Wales Trains, which had a lot of items in it that we had to try and go through. And yesterday we spent the better part of the whole day uh, in negotiations with all the other unions, I might point out. So there were two issues going on here. One is the issue around fixing the new inner city fleet, and that's a fight we've been having for six years, we had a previous agreement with Andrew Constance before the last state election, they reneged on that. Uh, and since then, several times we've had offers. As late as Friday, uh, we had a meeting with a different government minister who sat there and said to us, I'm not gonna agree with you guys, we're not gonna fix the train. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna offer a bonus payment to train drivers and guards who agree to work the unsafe train. Naturally enough, we said, that's rubbish, that's not gonna go anywhere, but he said, I want you to put that offer to your members. And so we did that all over the weekend. And as um, Wednesday morning, we were actually sitting with all those delegates. We had 100 delegates uh, on Zoom and we were having that conversation and we got an invite to go to our current transport minister, uh, where he then proceeded to say to us, listen, forget about what happened last week. We've now got a new offer for you uh, and it's gonna, you, we're gonna fix your train. It's now 264 million, and we thought, well, that's better than the 1 billion they've been previously quoting. Um, and we'll send you some paperwork through, and we want you to just agree to everything and just go on. Right? Okay, and well, well. We went, well, it's not going to quite work like that, right? Okay, so yeah, but, but the government has said. We, we got okay. The let me just pick you up there. I've only got a short window of time here, Alex. Sorry, I've just got to interrupt you. But um, no, the gov so the right. government has said that it will do no, it, though. It, it, it has sent you the paperwork, and, and David Elliott did, did say that but, here yesterday as well. And, and so it, it takes a little time to get through the legalities of everything. So why, why not at least pause the action as a show of good faith? We, because, Peter, we can't. Our organisation is very democratic. Uh, I'm an elected leader of the union and that is there because I respect the rights of our members and delegates to make those decisions. And we, like I said, we've been here four times before. Friday, a different government minister, a more senior minister than our transport minister said, forget it, we're not going to do it, we're going to pay your people to work these trains. So three days later, we've got a different minister sitting in front of us saying, trust me, and look, to be fair to David Elliott, he's been the one minister that's been up front with us and tried to do everything he can. But he's not a senior minister in the government. He's not part of the executive remuneration committee. He's not part of that kitchen cabinet that makes these ultimate decisions. So we naturally well, enough... Why not, though? I mean, he's the minister. Said, ..send us the paperwork. He is a transport minister, but he's been overruled twice before by Damien Tudor Hope, who is a more senior minister in the right. government. That's are you, the reality of it. Are and you our playing... members have seen through this. And don't forget, sorry, Pete, don't forget, on, in February this year, this government made a decision to shut down the rail network and try to blame our union for that and our members. And they, in exchange for that, they then ended up having to apologise and give everybody 12 free, fair free days of travel. That was only in February. So we've got a long memory. We don't just forget what's happened in the last couple of months. We've been fighting this fight for six years. And the train has to be fixed separately to any enterprise agreement negotiation and outcome later. But that is a separate deal. The first thing that has to happen is we've got to fix an unsafe train. We have always said we want safety on our network. The travelling public of New South Wales deserves a safe train. They don't need a second-rate train from South Korea that's unsafe. But uh, an independent an federal regulator says they are safe. Waratah trains. Yeah, and look, and we we reject that. Obviously, uh, we we are you going to listen to the people that work on the railway? You're going to listen to some bloke sitting in a seat somewhere in an office that's got no attachment to the reality of the railway we know today. Like, I mean, that's the reality of it. We work to a different railway standard. 
which is safe a safe earth. Okay. Not Just safe as reasonably practical because the dollars account for that. Alex, right? we've got... We need a safe railway. We owe it to the people in New South Wales to have a safe railway. Okay. D and unfortunately, these people are out there playing with their lives. Okay. Well, the people are accusing you of playing politics this morning as well. Just we've got 30 seconds left, Alex. Oh, What's your message yes, to the hundreds of thousands of, of commuters who have got to work out how to get to work today? Look, we are, as always, we apologise for the travelling public. It is our job to get you backwards and forwards every day safely. We are doing this to help you. We need you to bear with us while we have this fight until we can get this government to wake up to itself and actually treat people with the respect they deserve, fix the trains and then sit down and do a negotiation with us about our wages and conditions. But until they fix the train, we're not even wanting to have a conversation. We've never had a negotiation about wages yet, by the way. So this is about safety for us, then working conditions and then wages. OK. Alex Classens, uh, as always, appreciate you coming on.